welcome to Garden Air. I'm Natalie and today I wanted to talk with you about amaryllis, how to take care of the bulbs, how to plant them, how to pick them out, and how to store them for the following year so you can have blooms all over again from your bulbs. So I have a few with me today in a couple of different stages so we can discuss what you're doing with your bulb even if you have some now that you've already flowered this year. So I have, let's see, I have this beautiful one in bloom right now. And she is absolutely amazing. This is from a really large bulb. So she put out three stems and they are all in the process of opening. So this is a nice, fresh, blooming amaryllis. Um, I have a few in some different stages getting ready to bloom, so we are still developing a bud here. There's a couple of buds down here still developing. And then I have one that's just finishing up. And these are just four bulbs that I planted all together into one basket so that, I don't know, I picked these guys up actually on sale and I was really glad that I did. So I just popped them all together into some soil in a basket uh, to see how they would do all together and they're all blooming at a different time um, Which is really cool. So I have this one um, She's really beautiful. This one was actually called spotted queen and She is on her way out. So I'm going to show you what you can do with an amaryllis as it's finishing its blooming its blooming cycle um, Sometimes they'll shoot up another blooming stalk after this one's finished sometimes they don't shoot them like if it's going to have multiple stalks sometimes it doesn't shoot them up simultaneously sometimes one pops up after the first one's done blooming and you never really knew it was was going to show up i've had that happen before um so that's always a welcome surprise um so don't always put your amaryllis away too soon because you never know what's going what it's going to do in the next week or two coming up so let's take a look at the one that's finishing up so we're going to take care of this bulb here now that it's finished it's pretty much finished blooming this is the last flower left um it gave me four all together and it looks like she's developing, she's getting ready to develop her leaves down here, which do come after the blooming. Um, so I'm going to just take the stem right off. And I'll leave this bulb in place. And I'm not sure if this is a leaf coming up or if it's going to be another blooming bud so we'll wait and see what this is actually going to end up doing um, so I know for sure what it will be um, because once my bulbs start growing leaves which come after the blooms that's when I feed my bulbs don't ever feed your bulbs while they're blooming or while they're in dormancy I only feed them during leaf growing time and this is one of the things about growing plants. We all do things very differently. We all do things what works for us, our needs for our plants, our needs for our flowers, our environment. Everything that we do might be <clears throat> a little bit different, a little bit unique. So when I do my videos, I'm simply going over what I do, what works for me, and you can try incorporating anything that I suggest or do things differently. So if you do things differently, you're welcome to share in the comments below what works for you. And we can definitely share different growing techniques and things that we all like to do. Um, but I do, I do only feed my amaryllis bulbs when the leaves start to grow. I don't give it any food any time before that period um, because when the bulb goes in dormancy, it's growing food and it's preparing energy of its own. And the bulb is just a, a vessel storing energy that it has created for itself in order to make these amazing blooms. Um, so it really doesn't need to be fed in the time that 
it's sending out these stems and these buds and then later on these gorgeous blooms. But once the blooms are done and the bulb now starts growing leaves, those leaves are now coming out to photosynthesize and start refeeding the bulb before it goes back into dormancy and, and starts preparing the next cycle of blooms. So that's a good time to give some supplemental feeding. And you can feed it any way that you like. You can feed it um, a slow a slow fertilizer that you only give it maybe once every couple of months, um, like a slow release, like a granular, or you can give it a liquid fertilizer. This is um, actually a fertilizer I get from Hosterman's Orchids here in uh, the Chicago area. And I can use this fertilizer for most of my plants. It's really good for my orchids because it's urea free. However, it can still be used for other plants as well. So this is um, a ratio of eight for eight. So it has um, a good number for flowering and also a good number for developing leaves and nitrogen. So I want to give this to these bulbs once they start developing leaves. Once I see leaves, I'm not going to give it any fertilizer until I see actual leaves coming out and, and being formed. Um, and then I'll give it small amounts of fertilizer in its water, maybe only once every other week. So typically when you find a bulb, um, and you're looking at the size, a 26 to 28 centimeter bulb will usually produce one stem with three to four beautiful blooms. A 28 to 30 centimeter bulb will give you about one to two stems with three to four blooms on each stem. A 30, 32 might give you two stems with four to five blooms each. A 32 to 34 centimeter bulb can likely give you two and up to three stems with four to five blooms each. And a 34 to 36 centimeter bulb is a really nice, large quality bulb, which will give you three to four stems having four to five blooms on each stem. They are pretty magnificent. So what it comes down to when, you're order, when you order or you're buying in person your amaryllis bulbs is that size really does count when it comes to what you're going to get out of the bulb. So it kind of speaks for itself because this little bulb here, it really just put out one stem. And I'm going to put some pictures up of some different amaryllis grown by me and by some of my friends. And you can see some of the beautiful varieties. There's doubles, there's singles. They come in a multiple amount of beautiful colors ranging from white, salmon, pink, um, there's even some chartreuse in some of them, red, splotched, striped, spotted. They're absolutely beautiful. So when you get your amaryllis home and you take it out of the box or out of its packaging, you might find that there's um, like a paper kind of coat covering on it. It's usually dry and papery. This happens when the amaryllis has been stored. So after it's bloomed and allowed to regrow leaves, usually the amaryllis are put back into a dormancy period and they're stored for about a two month period, maybe more. And they might develop um, layers of this papery substance just from the outer part of the bulb kind of drying out. So when you when you're about to buy an amaryllis, it's really good to inspect that bulb to make sure these paper layers and the soft areas of the bulb don't go all the way through. You want the heart of the bulb, the very center, to be nice and firm. If you feel like it's squishy at all or too soft all the way through the bulb, that's going to be a bad bulb and you don't wanna purchase it. So make sure they're firm, they're healthy, and that the paper layering around it is at a minimal amount. There's nothing wrong with the paper. Usually I just pull it all off before planting and I know when I 
uh, after I store it and give it a dormancy period, some of that paper might develop again. It's okay, I just clean it off all over again, start again. So let's talk about what to do with our amaryllis when it's at this point. So it's finished blooming and the one that I've just cut off here. So now that, well, it's February, it might be December when yours are finished, maybe January. What I really do now is just let it kind of sit in the house like a house plant. It's really too cold outside here in my zone to put it outside. Um, if you are in a warmer zone, amaryllis bulbs are hardy from like zone eight to 11. Some, if you look at the type, some you might get to a zone seven, but I think that's really pushing it for its hardiness. And then you can plant them outside and just enjoy them year round. But for those of us in the colder zones, we have to grow them indoors. So I just keep this little guy sitting like this in its pot for the rest of the growing season, all throughout spring and summer, and I just take care of it. Like I said, I feed it once every couple of weeks and I water it once every couple of weeks. I don't um, I don't overwater my amaryllis, amaryllis bulbs. They have a tendency to uh, rot and just not do too well if you overwater them. So keep them a little bit on the dry side. I water very lightly and make sure everything is draining. Like I put these guys into this basket and then I just kind of lined with plastic but I popped some holes into it to make sure it had some drainage so my bulbs aren't just sitting around in water. So after the summer is over and I have my leaf growth, it's time to start putting it into dormancy. You'll see that the leaves actually start to die back. And this is the bulb preparing itself for that dormancy stage. The bulb knows that it's time to stop photosynthesizing and it's time to start going in, having a rest period and using that rest period actually to start storing that food, getting that food ready and getting start getting those, ball, those buds formed and ready for blooming. So what I do is I let all of the leaves fall off naturally on their own and then the, I take them out of the soil or whatever it is that I'm growing in that, them in. Sometimes I use potting soil. Sometimes I just use like this peat mixture, but I take it out of anything like that and I store them in just wood chips or wood shavings, something that's dry. And I don't put them in a bag. You can just put them in like, um, like a box or just something that's breathable and they go into a cool dark place for around two months. So if I want to put them away and have them bloom for December, I'm going to put them away in, or in September. <laughs> Sorry, I'll put them away in September so that I can wake them up by November and hopefully have blooms somewhere around Christmas time. So they in the time that they're dormant, I don't water them, I don't feed them, I don't do anything with them. I keep them cold, I keep them in the dark, and I just leave them alone. Just don't forget that they're there. So plan on when you wanna bring them out because they will generally bloom within about a month, a month and a half after getting them repotted. Of course your type will depend. Some are a little bit slower than others and you might have a longer window to wait for blooms. And this usually depends on where the amaryllis, amaryllis bulb came from. There's a difference between getting them from the northern hemisphere versus the southern hemisphere. So if you really want to look into your type, find out where it's from and your northern, your northern hemisphere bulbs might take a little bit longer to bloom. So with that said, that's how you store your amaryllis bulbs. Just bring it back out, get it ready to you know pot up again like you did the year before, set it in a sunny window, start watering it again, and you'll see life start coming back to your amaryllis. And it will be blooming again for you beautifully in no time. So that's what I do with my amaryllis, and I really enjoy them. I love their colors. I love that I can have these gorgeous 
blooms in the middle of winter while the rest of my garden's asleep. And I have these to look forward to. And one of the best things you can do is grow them in different time frames. So let's say you have six bulbs or seven bulbs or whatever, and you want a bloom at a different time, like each week, just plant them in weekly stages. So start your first bulb week, bulb week one, start your next bulb week two, start your next bulb, next bulb week three, and you'll have blooms going on for the next few months ahead of you. And if you keep them in a cooler room versus a really warm room, like I don't want my amaryllis growing and blooming right next to a heat source, because it will dry out my petals and my flowers won't last very long. So if I grow them in a cooler room where the temperatures aren't so warm, my flowers actually last even longer. And like this one that I just cut for you today, this had this bloomed for a month straight. Between the all four of the blooms, I had a month of beautiful flowers from this one. Um, this one, this is my first year growing this one. This is a brand new bulb for me. It's absolutely amazing. I believe, I believe the name of this one is Ambiance. Um, but I could be wrong, but I do believe that's its name. Um, it's just striking and it's just beautiful and I'm so happy with it. And I'll turn it around a little bit so you can see everything it's doing and just this amazing amount of blooms. And I still have this stem here not open yet. So it's really just going to keep going on and on for me. And as long as I keep it in a cool spot in my living room, each bloom will last a little bit longer than if I keep it by someplace warm, hot, or dry. So extend them as long as you can by keeping them growing in a cooler area. So that's everything I really wanted to discuss about the amaryllis today. And if you're new to growing amaryllis or you've never grown them before, I really encourage you to give them a try because they are just so uplifting and they really just they just really make you happy <laughs> during the during the winter time. If you just miss your flowers so much, these really help fill that void. And if you do grow amaryllis, if you're experienced with them or you have other ideas, other tips or other suggestions and you do something differently, please go ahead and share it down in the comments below. We should be a sharing community here on this channel. I want everyone who loves gardening, who's new to gardening, who's experienced at gardening, to just come together and really enjoy this hobby together and share our ideas and our love for the plants that we grow, no matter what they are, whether they're indoors, whether you have rolling hills of apple trees or cherry trees or you just grow amazing roses or, or flowers from seed or you just have a farm whatever it is that you love to grow we'd love to hear it about it and see what it is that you love and what you can share with the community that i hope to grow here on this channel so with all of that said i hope you guys have a wonderful day please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. This is my first sit down video for YouTube and I was pretty nervous about it. So um, I'm excited to be here. Um, it's a brand new channel and I have a lot that I really want to bring to this channel for everything from gardening and plant care to basic home care. We'll be doing cooking and all sorts of things on this channel. So I hope you join us and if you have any suggestions or ideas of things that you'd love to see on my videos, please suggest them below. I will be reading every comment and taking ideas from all of your suggestions. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.